You know, guys, we have so much fun rewatching this show, sharing it with you, sharing all the fun like guests and behind the scenes details. And if you want more of that, follow us where? Spotify, Apple, or anywhere you listen to podcasts. Enjoy the episode, guys. Hey, everybody on Wizards of Waverly Pod. How are you? Jen Stone, David Delaware. Oh, how, hi, how, how, oh, hi, how, I, can't, I can't speak English. It's good we're doing a we podcast. We have a very special guest today, everybody. Very, very special. She's like, she, she's like what I like to refer to as the Wizards Easter egg. I like to say she's an anomaly. Oh. Because she was much, on, much what, what, what was it, eight or nine episodes? She was on nine episodes. Hold on, hold on, hold on. She, nine episodes. Never the same yeah. character, or maybe she was. That's, that's a Amanda question that Tepe. I have. Yes! Hi. Thank you. I'd like Welcome. to say I am an enigma. Oh, yes. Yes. See, I feel like that's the best. Yes, part. that is that is really a wonderful introduction. I'm very humbled and I'm very grateful to be here. Thank We're you. happy to have you. In fact, we go so far back. Oh my god, I'm about to find out something I didn't know. I was an extra what? on a film called Bachelor Man. Oh my god, that's a movie that I did. That you were starring in with Missy Pyle. Yes. And that was one of my what? vouchers. I want to say vouchers oh, for, for my SAG card. What? That's amazing. And you that were so super crazy. sweet to me. Oh good, I was not an asshole. I was a <laughs> featured extra, I'll have you know. Oh, what'd you what do? Did we do? What um, was I was in the bar. Okay. okay I there's was a lot of, of bars. Yeah, in the I was thing. one but of did the. Did I like, like come up and hit on you and yes, be like, you "Hey, did. yeah, uh, are your legs tired? Because they've been running through my yeah, mind yeah. all day." Yeah. And that's I, what, but that's what it was. It, it was, was that kind of a show. Yeah. So yeah. that's when I first met you, and I thought, "I just thought oh, he's so nice." Oh, yeah. And that, that goes a, a long way with me. Yeah. You know, you it have should. to be nice on the way up because then it gets bumpy on the way down if you're not. You always run into people again. I know because my butt is bumpy. Yeah. She had that check. <laughs> but hence, here we are again. I did not know that, Amanda. Yeah. That's so amazing. John Putch directed that. Missy Pyle was in it. I remember. And it was, if I may, just for a second, it was pilot season. Mm -hmm. And I had, as we all do, we have uh, auditions throughout the, the... I used to have like 40 pilot auditions. It's gone down to like half during right. pilot season. Which yeah. We don't have really to brag. Bad. Yes. Okay. <laughs> but so I had like two or three auditions to be series regulars on a show and the audition for Bachelor Man, which was 16, 17 pages. Was this the one you were telling me about where it was like, oh, the negs? No, that was, was CSI uh, mm. Miami that oh, okay, I did okay, where they were right. naked. But but I went in and I realized it was a good thing as an actor to not give a shit. Yeah. Because I just went in there and I was like, fuck it, I'm just going to do my thing and yes. whatever. And then John Putch was like, you're the guy. That's the amazing thing about why I'm here today. When I auditioned for this show, I went in and thought, I don't give a shit. Wait, okay, so that's one of our questions. You're jumping the gun, yeah. Amanda. No, I love it. On. I love it. You're like, we have like telekinesis or something. Yes. So the first episode you did was which one? Crazy, Crazy 10 Minutes Crazy sale. 10 Minutes Sale. Because I remember coming on the show, that was my first episode too. Yes. And I remember coming in and I was still trying to find, I knew who Harper was, but I was trying, we were all, we've talked about how the first season, we were all trying to find how we work together, how we all fit. And... I just remember being so impressed and blown away by you because on the page, it's super easy for like co-stars uh, to just like kind of write them off, not really try. And they're challenging because you're not given a ton. Mm -hmm. So I just remember being so blown away at you making such a strong choice and such an interesting, <laughs> hilarious character that was not written that way. Thank so you. walk me through the audition. Walk me through how that character um, came to be. Well, let's start with my childhood trauma. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, Which played into it. Of course it, it did. Oh, it was there. So, Always so does. I had worked with Todd, <laughs> yeah. um, Todd Greenwald, who yes. I love. Um, uh, and I had already done two Disney shows. Which were? Which were Raven and Corey. Okay. And I loved both of those actors. Uh, Raven was like a Lucille Ball. Yeah, since a and little, little child. Yeah, I mean, just watching Raven um, really inspired me as, as an actor. I remember, but I also went really big. You know when you've gone yeah. really yeah, yeah, yeah. big? Like a Disney. Like a Disney yeah, actor yeah. does. And then I came back for Corey, and that was a recur of this like psychotic uh, tour guide of the White House. And I would go, no way, no way! And I'd have this like crazy thing, and Kyle thought it was hilarious. Mm -hmm. um, and everybody on both sets, you know, what they do is they laugh at you. Yeah. And so as a kid, that was my thing. If I can get you to laugh, of course. Yeah. I'm gonna get you to it's laugh. It's a high. Yeah. Well, what so, were you hiding? <laughs> 
from. <laughs> How much time do you have? <laughs> uh, so anyway, I was sort of embarrassed, right? Because yeah. my acting had gotten so blown out of proportion. Yeah. I was a serious actress, you know. Um, and you studied. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. At, yeah. I, where did you study? So I went to Cal Arts. And I studied very seriously. I also went to NYU. Yeah. So, you know, showing up on the set, it was kind of this like, all right, well, not that I'm better than this, but I'm excited to be here, you know. I get it. But the last two yeah. Disney jobs, I sort of went crazy. Okay, so you get the audition. I get the audition. If I may, as an actor, there's yeah. not a lot there. There's not a lot of jokes. No. It's a lot of just kind of, uh, you know, exposition and saying right. stuff. Right. Well, and that's, that's what I was talking about. The challenge of a co-star a lot of times is you're like, what do I do with this? Yes. Because it's, it's almost being paralyzed by too much option yes. and not enough. I had nothing. There was nothing there. Yeah. Right? So Ruth and Robert, who- Casting directors. Love Ruth and Robert. Um, and they they'd brought me in for several things. And that day- I remember just being like, oh my God, I'm going to do less. Yeah. I did so much on those last two Disney shows. I'm going to do less and fuck it. But, right? But yes. Yet you yeah. You were yeah. doing more. That's the you know hard I mean? thing. Was... That's the hard thing. It was a crazy 10 minute sale. Yeah. So I, I had read it and I knew it was going to be this crazy thing. And so I thought, what if I come in there? And do a flip, like a turnaround. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. What about if, that's how why that works? Because so much. it's so crazy. What if my character's like, yeah, these sales get crazier and crazier. Yes, every I didn't even year. think about yeah, that juxtaposition of like the, yeah. the chaos. And Fred yeah. Savage mm -hmm. was directing, and we were in front of the audience. Now I'm a theater person. I teach theater. Yeah, I've I I fell in love with acting through theater and the live studio audience thing. It's theater. It is. Yes. Yeah. And so they're laughing. Fred's coming up and giving me little things to try. And I'm improv Yeah. And he let me improv at the end, which I think they use as the tag in that Yeah, episode. they did. Which is not something that happens because when you're doing a sitcom, everything is placed out, cameras, mm -hmm. where the boom is going, all that stuff. So the fact that you got to improv, but that's I'm how, jealous. That's how, <laughs> no, but that's how you Sorry. know something's working. Is when you yes. see the director getting excited. You yes. see the, and that's what's so great about four camera, like live studio audience sitcoms is the fact that like you get that immediate reaction that you also get from theater. Yes. Because I started in theater too and it's I love it so much. I still have to get that like itch. It's like being a crackhead. Yes. Like you just like want that hit of yes. that of that immediate reaction. Yeah. And so yeah, having him come up to you must have been such a high because yeah. you're like, this is working. So you can kind of see me at the end with the loudspeaker kind of turning around the corner and delivering all these little asides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that was him saying like, okay, try this. And he kept saying like they love this. Yeah. Keep going. Yeah. So I just thought, oh, that was super fun. I didn't totally embarrass myself on the Disney Channel this time. <laughs> really great time. Like, I've redeemed myself in the world of Disney. Peace out. Cut right? to nine <laughs> episodes later. <laughs> then they say, we want you to do it again. Okay, and, again, minute, and, again, and again, and again, and again. You do that episode. <laughs> yes. Right? You do the audition. You go in there. You do it and everything. And then they call you and say, what? We want you to come back, but a different person, same character. Was this discussed? That's the hard thing about TV. You know it wasn't discussed. It was yeah. sort of like, come back. We liked it. Try and replicate it, right? Yeah, yeah. And which was the next one? The so the one after that was the hostess and I almost oh, drowned in a chocolate yeah. fountain. Follow me to your table yeah. for okay, 10, so this 11, was 14, or 12. This was something that always bugged me. And yeah. I, I want to hear it from you because, I mean, obviously you're her. Is is it the same person that just can't keep a job or is it a lot of different people <laughs> what did you think what was your well, in your brain i knew peter and i had talked about this character on the odd couple mm -hmm. and he kept showing up and he was the same guy but he had a different job so that was their idea okay. right so you were so so the base of it was you yeah. were the same character yeah which was sort of which monotone I, yeah blase, i can't give a shit i'm the here the only Time I have to say, looking back at it, which sorry guys, I keep looking at my phone because that's where my notes are. Is the only time I saw one where you actually looked like you were excited was the info desk lady in Wizard School. Yes, where you were really like, I could tell you were into the the volcano. Pun. Yeah, yes, that yes. was the only time that I was like, this seems a little different because you seem into it. Yes, and I was I was trying to you know I'm a people pleaser and yeah. I think all actors are right. We are. So I'm trying to give them what they want, but as an artist, I'm getting kind of bored. Right. Well, so, I mean, what? That was like episode. To the club. 
like <laughs> six. That was episode seven, I think you had done at right. that point. Yeah. And at that point, they were also letting me improv with Selena. So yeah. that episode was mostly me and Selena. And that was a really fun day because yeah. I sort of took her into another place <laughs> where she was sort of. The you drugs know, had kicked in. Yeah, like something, like, <laughs> like she they, was, they because she was in something. another reality. Yeah, okay. They they kind of let me go into a fun place with her. Yeah. And and that episode's one of my favorites. My other favorite is the tea party. Yeah. Which, of course, the graphics. So bad. Oh, like my the special God. special effects. It's stuff, one of our yeah. least favorite When I saw effects. myself grab oh. the chandelier and swing <laughs> and from And the size of the whole room. <gasps> oh, my yeah. God. It was just like, okay. And I'm from Cincinnati, Ohio. That's where I hail from. <laughs> so sort of like calling, you know, you, how you call your family. Like, I'm going to be on this show. <gasps> and everyone kind of going like, it was great. And then the, um, the, the, the chandelier yeah. part was interesting. Uh, but I remember getting the script, like the hotel, and it just sort of said flirt of love. It did just like this weird yeah. thing. Yeah. And I'm in the dressing room, you know, listening to y'all giggle in the hallway, trying to find a way into that. I think that's yeah. what actors do. Like into the group or into the groove of the show? Oh, not the group. You know, in <laughs> She's like, I can give a shit about that. When you're that. a recurring character, you don't worry about that. Yeah. yeah. Although I will get to that later because no, I got it's oh, one of the challenges. I got very close to y'all, yeah. you and Selena, when we were there. Um also, I felt like that was because you were there from the beginning. Yes. Yeah. With us. Yes. It wasn't like you, because I feel like one of the challenges of being a recurring or a guest star is you come in this established thing. Yes. Um, and you have to kind of like find your way in there yeah. somewhat. But you were really there from our second episode on. I know. And so that's why like we like held that special place for you because yeah. we were just yeah. like, oh, your family, like you, you, you know what I mean? Same. You were there with us when we were still trying to find and it. I heard about your crushes. Oh, yeah. Right. I heard about, because I was another girl on the set and like yeah. we talked a lot about stuff. Yeah. You know, I was about to get married. We were talking about my wedding. Yeah. Um, so anyway, the hotel, flirty blah, flu blah, flu blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah. I'm sitting there like, well, how, how am I going to say this? And it's like every single line. I, I would rehearse and rehearse and rehearse until I found something that I thought was funny. Yeah. yeah. You know, and I, I'm a teacher. I've been working with kids as my day job. First of all, it's about work. You know, comedy is work. I yeah. had... I love four camera because I was on a soap as well for a long time. And that's work. That's yes. Work. That's a lot of pages. That's theater. Yeah. That's theater, yeah. but it's that, a lot of pages yes. every day. And I was it's this like turnaround. crazy horny nanny. Um, again, <laughs> okay, your parts. All your parts are great. <laughs> like, again, like I'm supposed to only do a couple episodes. What show is this? This is Days. No, this is General Hospital. General Hospital. Okay. And like at first I'm dressed like a caddy. You know, like, I'm like this Irish. So I did it with, like, an Irish accent. And then they're like, no, lose the accent. <laughs> and I worked with Tyler Christopher, who I love. Yeah. Um, he was Nicholas Cassadine. And I started getting these fan letters from prisons. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. I you got, know? I got some of those, too. Kind of thing? Yeah, like, real, like, I, I, like, I was a nanny on the show. So, like, one was, like, a, a portrait of me as the Madonna and oh. child, sort of. But I, I was this evil nanny who was hot for the guy. You know, and he's a hot guy. Um, so I soap, of course. Of course. So I, I made friends with the costume designer, and yeah. I'm so glad you had the costume designer for this show. Yeah. Because they make or break an actor. They do. Yeah. And he they would do. come up to me and say, you're going to be in a bikini next week, you yeah. know, on the soap. Thanks for giving me a heads up. So I'd, like, you know, reveal, like, from Mrs. Doubtfire <laughs> to, like, Cindy Crawford <laughs> swimsuit edition. Yeah. And, and so I learned, I'd get these pages of these plotting monologues where I'm like stirring tea to poison him. And like, you know, you always have twin babies. Of course. Yeah. One time. of them loves you. The other one fucking hates you. <laughs> yeah. So like you're holding the baby that hates you, like plotting, looking out the window. And you only get one take on a soap, much like the sitcom. Yeah. You know, you have to go, go, go. Yeah. You get the lines that day in the chair. Uh, and I don't mean the electric chair. I mean the makeup chair. Yeah. And, and, and. Just for everyone who doesn't know this, when yeah. you're doing a soap opera, you will do 20 to 25 pages a day. Oh, yeah. Which is insane. Yeah, yeah they, I would go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I have so many friends that like they say it's great training. Leonardo DiCaprio started on a soap opera. It's yeah. great training. And you I learn how to be three. on a set. You learn how to, sorry, I didn't mean to, but like no. you learn how to like be on a set and be able to like turn and burn those right. pages fast. Yeah, I would, I was going to say I would do three episodes worth at once. Wow. So all of those soapy speeches. Yeah. And 
the first time I did about 50 episodes, the first time I made a mistake, I got fired. No, <laughs> what was the mistake? Not fired, but like, you know, it was kind of like the first time I flubbed a line. Um, and, and I guess that's what I get to when it, when it comes to work, because we're all human. Yeah. You know, that's the thing I teach as well. You know, we're humans and to err is human. Yeah. And so as an actor, to show up on a set and make a mistake in front of all those people. But that's rare. Doing a, doing 50 episodes and making one mistake in yeah, there that and yes, then yes. getting fired is, is them. That's a weird thing. Right. Would, yeah. you, would you say? I no? would say, yeah. but it also taught me a lot about myself. Yeah. You know, that kind of work ethic and also the expectations I had of myself as an actor to be perfect. You know, yeah. and that I think that's a, also a cis female thing for me. Like I had to be sexy, but I was weird. You know, as an actor, I I, I would present well, but then I'd open my mouth <laughs> and I'd be, you know, quirky. I, no, I totally get you that. You know, so it was this yeah. like very strange thing in my career to find my niche. Yeah. And jobs like The Soap and Wizards were places where I really, you know, practiced being who I was, yeah, you know, so I would practice on the show on Wizards, really, really um, kind of over practice. You know, I'm a yeah. perfectionist. Yeah, and I think you talked about how like a lot of times actors are people pleasers. I think a lot of times they're for female actresses or actresses in particular. I think a lot of times they're perfectionists as well. Yeah, and I. I definitely was. I mean, a lot of these episodes I'm watching for the first time because I could not watch myself. Like, if if I wasn't in the episode or like only playback, I would watch. I couldn't watch the episode in yeah. total. Like, didn't go home and watch. But did you watch your stuff? Do you did you not just Wizards, but w would you watch the soap? Would you watch yeah. certain things that you've filmed? I watched myself, <laughs> but I remember New Employee. Yeah. That was my episode with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I saw so much of myself in you. You were so. I beat myself up. I that know. Episode. Really I know, hard. and yeah. I had that too. You know, I had that as an actor as well. Yeah, and I remember having that. I did a show called Studio Sixty on the Sunset. That Strip. was a great show. Great yeah. show, and I, re of course, I recurred on that show. Um, and Amanda Peet, who ironically has the same last name as me but rearranged, she was on the show. I had a speech. And for some reason, now this is Sorkin. Yeah, it's, I was about to say, I was like, it's Aaron Sorkin, so the pressure is on. You, ca you yeah. cannot. Yeah. And I had a brain glitch that yeah. day. I, For some reason, I kept saying and instead of but. Mm. Yeah. And I'll never forget the director that day. And I won't throw him under the bus. You know, you never know the battles people but are fighting. But what was his name? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just, just so frustrated with me. Yeah. Because they were clearly behind, and I could not get it. That one word. That I happens get as it. an actor. Sometimes you glitch, yes. like the Matrix, and there's like one word. Like there's a one outtake on on Wizards where I was like, "We're going to the Russo family reunion," and I was like, "Russo hoosie woozy," and I couldn't. <laughs> no, but, so, but sometimes too, then it, and so also especially if you're starting off knowing it's Sorkin, knowing you can't mess up, right. thing, you're already right. in your head, and something like that, you're like, "Okay, I've messed up this word," and then your brains and gets in your head. The moment you get in your head, it's death yeah. because it's I, like you're already going to mess it up. Yeah, yeah, and I've already said this on the podcast, but I auditioned for Sorkin for, for something, and he was reading with me. There was one word that I, you know, like I said, a, a hundred thousand fucking yeah. times in my brain, and of course, in front of him, I fucked it up. Yeah, yeah, because your brain betrays you. Yeah, yeah. I, will, I will never forget Amanda Pete in that moment, though, who's also a theater person. Yeah. You know, leaning forward, and she's like, you got this. Just look at me. Oh. Just breathe with me. And I... So I can go home. <laughs> <laughs> right? I, but I remember being, looking at you... And us kind of having a moment yeah. like that where we both decided to breathe. Yeah. You know, and I think the word was like, let's just have fun with this take. Yeah. And when someone says that to me or before a take, <sighs> yeah. it yeah. let me off the hook. Yeah. Because the expectation I have of myself is mm -hmm. is one that I'll never be able to achieve. Yep. You know, and I looked at you and then we we had the hardest time not laughing. Yeah. Because it was all coming out. I know you've only been working here four hours, <laughs> but congratulations, your employee of the month. And I, you know, in comedy, everything is fast. Yeah. Uh, louder, faster, funnier. Yeah. And so I was playing against that. I was going really slow. You know, I'll go home, hook up my printer, print it. <laughs> pause, pause, pause. I just realized something. Huh? In, in Zootopia, 
there's the sloth. The oh, movie, yeah. Yeah, yes. Who, you know, it takes them five hours to laugh. You know what I mean? <laughs> there is a little bit of like, while you're doing the lines, I was like, all right, get to it, Amanda. Get yeah. to it. No, yes. Yes. You know, and, I remember yes. so distinctly. First of all, thank you for having that moment because I so remember that episode specifically because it, I felt like at the time it was the first like, oh, because you would get scripts like where you're like, oh, this is my episode mm -hmm. or whatever, or like more focused. And then you have the episodes where you're like, oh, this is my knocking futz episode where you come in and be like, this is weird. And then you leave and you're like wearing a pineapple or something. And I would say to my mom, I was like, oh, well, this is a knocking futz episode for me. Yeah. So I guess I can bank more school hours, you know. But um, I remember that episode was the first time in the show that I was like, oh, this is really an episode I can sink my teeth into. And I put so much pressure on myself yeah. that I just was like so like tight and and with comedy you succeed when you're loose you succeed mm -hmm. when you you can let it go and let it breathe and that's and have discovery yeah. and i so appreciate you having that moment with me of being like let's have fun but i also really remember struggling with um because harper is so energetic and so fast and so quick yes um and so with your character Trying to find, and it was fun. It was a fun challenge, but trying to find that balance with yeah. that slow staccato with this fast, high, quick. Yes. Of just like, and, and I ended up finding um, comedy in the frustration and the confusion of like just kind of leaning into, which is always the key with it as an actor is to lean into the reality and the truth of the moment. Yeah. Of like me just being like, I don't know what to do with you. I'm so frustrated. Ugh. You know what I mean? Like that was how I like figured out how to, that dynamic. Yeah, my dad always said, make it a problem. Like deal with the problem. Like mm -hmm. don't fix everything. You know what I mean? Because yeah. that's real in real life. There's yeah. things. But instead of going against the problem that I was having of these two different comedy styles, I just leaned into the fact that I was like, frustrated, irritated, didn't know how to get through it. Yeah. And that's what helped me. Which was great, which makes it good because yeah. then it becomes real, yeah. you know? The, I have to add, yeah, go ahead. No, I, I was gonna say the real problem of that episode was the potato yogurt. Oh God. Which ended up it being- It was the Gert Barn where you were the manager. Yes. Jennifer was under a spell, the serving lunch spell where she was doing everything yes. perfect. Yes. And, but then the yogurt, uh, which was yeah, yeah. mashed potatoes <laughs> colored, <laughs> Crazy. Was not, and it's really hard when you're doing physical comedy, yes. and they're like, make it a problem. Uh, you but know, it was get coming it from you. one place, it, but, but not yeah. just one place, but also here it was yeah. coming from. If you can't see me, I'm going like this with my hand, but it was like <laughs> up to your chest, yes. so you couldn't get it on you. Yeah. So both of you were trying to uh, get it and then have it, but yeah. you, it was our job. Yeah. But then she yeah. slips for real. And that was, I know. oh my god, that was from that was from the go comedy gods that they were like. You're gonna fall, and I was like, "Perfect, I can use this." <laughs> yes. Like it was. Oh. And let's not forget, you're a kid at this point, yeah. you know. And the, like working with kids, you understand like this is a very delicate thing. Yeah. And the fact that you were able to, you know, make those quick decisions, the way that you adjusted, yeah. the way that I mean, I remember watching you and Selena with the chocolate fountain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. All of those things that you were being tasked with as a kid. Like yeah. I have a lot of compassion. It's abuse. Wait, you know, what? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> just, I, when I don't I work, feel that way. Like, I don't. But when I work with kids too, you know, I realize like, oh, I get to have compassion for the kid that was once me. Yeah. Which is what brought me into acting. You know, yeah. I didn't think I was enough. Most of my acting teachers over the years said, You are enough. Yeah. And so that became the thing that I learned and I, I get to teach, yeah. you know, like you're already enough. Use what's happening right there in the moment and you don't have to create it. You don't have to fix it. Yeah. Just go with what, whatever is there. And that really requires you to be in the moment. I, 100%. When I'm teaching and I'm able to get a little something out of a, you know, get the kid to get out of their shell a little mm -hmm. bit, it's magical. I mean, that's the whole reason why I do it because – there's there's something that we're doing. We're giving them permission to be themselves and yeah. to get out of their skin. Yeah. One of the things that I started to do, uh, you know, Brian Cranston and all these other actors were like, my job, uh, Michael Keaton, my job became the audition. Yeah. I wasn't trying to get the job. And my whole kind of uh, thing was, I'm going to be of service. Yes. I'm going to be of service to the writing, to the mm -hmm. other actors, to the director, to the yes. producer, to the casting director, and just do it for them rather than do it for me. And then I booked a job. Yeah. See, that's you so know interesting what I mean? It helped me. Yes. That's interesting to hear you say it like that because what helped me was to go, you know what? Every audition is a chance I get to act today, but also it's the only time I get to do it without anyone else's opinion. Yeah. This is the one time, the first audition is the only time I get to do it 
my way. Yeah. yeah. My way, no one else is going to have any input. They're not going to this, this is me presenting, "Hey, if you hire me, this is my perspective of this." Yeah. Yeah. And so cuz I had to get away from because being a people pleaser, I had to get away from this is you're for you. This is what cuz then then I got into Okay, how do they want it done? How do they want it? Right. So I had to get away from that. So well, it's interesting my, to hear just yes, like but, the different perspectives. But just to clarify, yeah. my take was being of service to them. Mm. My opinion or my doing my best job with the material, giving them my take was me being of service to no, them. I've, you know no, I've not. Mean? That's not, no, I, I understand. Come on, Jennifer. Stop. No, okay. I understand what you're saying. But, but it, what's interesting for me is just how different actors have to come to different places for it to work. I couldn't do that because, like yeah. I said, I had spent my entire life up to that point being of service right. to mm -hmm. other people and I had to take ownership. Yeah. yeah. So it's interesting to me how, like, different actors have to meet themselves where they are mm -hmm. and go, okay, what do I need to be the most sufficient actor that I can and enjoy right. it. Right. Well, when you're of service, it gets you out of your head. You yes, know? Like, exactly. Part yeah. of being an actor, and, and one of the things that was hard for me about it was that it was so self-involved, mm -hmm. you know? And when I could put myself out there in that way, you know, th and I, I felt like that on the show for a while, where we were all really gelling because we, you know, we need to laugh. Yeah. yeah. There's nothing more intoxicating to me than my daughter's laugh. Yes. And kids laugh. You know, kids laughing, that's real. Yeah. You know, in a, in a town that's disingenuous. Yeah. So for me, it was, how can I be of service in this way? Where we all need it. Yeah. You know, right. laughing is a wonderful spiritual exercise for me. It helps me let it's go. Chemical. Can you laugh on cue? <laughs> no, but I, I She's think, like nervously now that you, you asked me. <laughs> You know what I? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can laugh when I think about my hair in the art museum piece. Oh God, yes! Because that was the day that. Is that when the the, the Mona Lisa? Oh, the, I love that came episode. Alive, it's a right? good one. That was the day that I I actually got my way with my hair, and I said, "Make me look ridiculous," and they did. You know, so I I loved looking ridiculous. Yeah, and you know, I was I was coming up in a time where women weren't really funny. You know, and I wanted to look funny. And so what I loved about the show is they were also, after a few episodes, kind of letting me yeah. put in my own little Okay, bits. I have, go ahead, Jen, no, no, no. and then I have two questions. I was just going to say, like, that's one of the things I love about um, just, because people ask me all the time, they're like, did you hate wearing, like, Harper's costumes? And I'm like, no, it made my job so much easier. It's so much easier to laugh at someone who has crazy hair yeah. or is wearing a lion on their shoulder yeah. or a tiger or whatever. You can play with it. Yeah, you, you can, can play, play it. Gives, yeah. It gives you more to play with. Oh, and so I love so that fun. you embrace them. They were so good to me. They let me improv. Fucking, why didn't I get to improv? <laughs> Fuck you, because, everybody! You know why? I will tell you right now. My, what, this is my guess. This is my guess. Because... My guess is probably that they could reel her in, but they know if they unleashed oh, your improv, yeah, they you couldn't. Be, oh, you wouldn't okay. be able to be stopped. Well, here's something that's point. interesting. <laughs> uh, a G. Charles Wright is a casting director who I love, and I took his acting class. I love him. He's I took best. his class too. And he said every single line, every single word verbatim. Yeah. Now, when I used to go, I would do it, and mm -hmm. I would do it as best I could. Um, and I mean, you know, back in the day, you used to kind of hold your paper and you were able to not be off book. Now you're off book and you have to do it. But I was always adding a little here or there. Yeah. I would add maybe a line or a button or a something. And he yeah. was like, don't do it. Mm. But I did. And I even did that when I auditioned for Wizards. And I mean, look, I, I wanted to work with someone who knew that I could add some stuff. Yeah. Now I did get to improv a little bit. And one, one of the episodes, I did throw out a line, uh, or two, and I yeah. would make a suggestion or something, you know, which was great. Okay, into the show, <laughs> the first season was shot in the can, yeah. meaning nothing had aired until the we were done with the last episode of the first season. Yeah. When did you, because I'm just assuming you got recognized from the show, but when did it start, and when was the last time it happened? And give us information about outside in the world, but being on Wizards. Well, you know, as an actress... Um, I turned 35 and I had a baby, right? Congratulations. Thank you. This was 10 years ago. I'm not afraid to say my age. I'm 45. You um, look awesome. Yeah, I was you. like, I feel When you awesome. said you had a 10 year old, I was like, you're lying. I feel great. You know, um, you can I, tell you feel great. Thank you. I love. You have a very good skin. Thank regimen, you. Clearly. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, I'm also a cancer survivor, recent oh, wow. cancer survivor. Um, and Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. My life happened, right? So 
I didn't really think about it. That was one of the blessings yeah. of going into full-time teaching. I was really focused on being of service in the classroom. I didn't do it perfectly, but I directed a lot of high school theater. That'll keep you busy. Mm. Are we allowed to know um, where you? Yeah, went? I teach at Notre Dame, okay. which oh, is in Sherman Oaks. Yeah, yeah. Got it. Yeah. yeah. I think so, David and his brother went to Notre Dame. Oh, really? I think so too. Yeah. So it's a great school. I've been Small there for world. a long time. Yeah. And um, it was just this different lifestyle. I didn't ever think about being an actor, you know? I yeah. think my fucking pressure about being an actor is tough. It's not it is. It's, it's, it's not liberating fun. to just enjoy. I can imagine it was. it's liberating to just enjoy being around acting in theater without having to book a job or worry about what you look like. Yes. And everything will, that goes with that. I'll answer the question. However, at at, at some fucking point <laughs> <I> mean, that, <laughs> <laughs> She's like, being very vulnerable. Well, that's being nice. the thing is like, I never really thought about it. I never yeah. really told my daughter. Her dad's an actor too. And yeah. I just didn't really mention it. We'd be at like Blaze Pizza or, you know, an ice cream place. Yeah. And I'd order. And, you know, someone behind the counter would be kind of giving me a look. <laughs> the look, right. yeah. And, you know, I'm friendly and sure. clearly like, you know, I think that's an important part about life. Yeah. You know, you have to be karmically kind of to everyone. Uh, yes. You know, hence you being so kind to me on our first job together. And eventually people would kind of ask me, like, hey, um, were you on the Wizards of Waverly Place? You know, and I had, I had forgotten about it, honestly. And I would say, yeah, yeah, I was. And yeah. then I would do a line for them and they'd go bananas. <laughs> What's your go-to line? Oh. Yeah, what would you go with first? Ladies, hey. welcome to the Hotel Fleur du Blanc. Fleur, 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 Fleur. <laughs> that one's ingrained in my brain pretty hard. Right? Yeah. Um, and I would swing my skirt, yes. right? That was part of my shtick. Yeah. Um, or I would usually do the new employee lines that I would do yeah. with you. And they'd always want a picture. Now, meanwhile, my daughter's like, my mom's Why? a teacher. Like, what's going on? <laughs> the, the most recent one was on Mother's Day. My poor little Chihuahua mix had a coyote attack. Oh, oh shit. So I'm, I'm walking out with like, the you know, the dog. Dog cone of shame and the dog. Yeah. And she's fine, thank okay. God. But the two nurses at the vet are going, sorry, before you go, can we get a picture with you? And as they're walking away, I deliver a line. And for some reason, it's like the 20-something circuit. Yeah, it's know? like forever frozen in that time frame. Yes. It's really interesting. Yeah. And, and I have to, you know, say it's a joy. Yeah. But, you know, I wanted to be Meryl Streep. This was not the thing Girl that saying. I <laughs> anticipated I'd be yeah. recognized for. You know, I did all these, like, gritty indies. Well, you, never, you never know what, what the thing is that's going to Well, but stay. that's, no. we talked about that a little bit before you came on about how, you know, life happens and it yeah. never happens the way that you think that it's going to. Mm -hmm. And it's such a gift that it doesn't happen the way that you think that it's going to. Because I've talked about this before where if you told me when the show ended what my life is going to be like now, I would have been like, what are you talking about? You know what I mean? But I'm so grateful that it did yeah. because you wouldn't be who you are today without that. Absolutely. Yeah. And we, yeah. you know, we wouldn't be here where we are today if there weren't people that like watching. Yeah, those things. Yeah. So I want to take a moment, like if I may, and just Please. thank Wait, all the on. people. Okay, now you can. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank all the people that have come up to me and said hi. Yeah. yeah. Because it reminds me of a part of my life that I have such fond memories yeah. of. Um, and I, you know, I always adore hearing from people that loved the show. Well, isn't that interesting? And that was like 15 years yes. ago. Yes. I mean, yes, it's playing on Disney Plus now. You can watch it on Disney Plus, Wizards <laughs> of Waverly Place, and then come listen to Wizards of Waverly Pod. There is something that the fans connected with, this this dysfunctional family that loved each other. Yeah. You know, that I mean, listen, every fucking family is dysfunctional. You <laughs> yes. know what I mean? Like yes. I didn't think mine was until <laughs> right. I woke up and and realized I was you know, it was all dysfunctional. But but the thing that is interesting is a lot of fans come up to us and say you were my childhood. You were mm -hmm. and I like that. I enjoy yeah. the fans coming up and it's also very easy because my dad was pretty famous yeah. and it used to be like, "Oh, do you have a pen, piece of paper, you got to write a thing." Now I just go they go, "Are you?" and I say, "Yes." My staple <laughs> joke is, "I played the mom." And then they go, "What?" No. <laughs> I grab their phone, I take a selfie. Nice. It's so nice to meet you. Yeah. I'm gone in 12 seconds. What a, what you know an what honor I mean? and a privilege to be a part of someone's childhood. Oh my 
it. God. And that show was really smart. And kids are really smart. Yeah. It, it wasn't one of those dumb kid shows. Yeah. yeah. The jokes were kind of edgy. Yeah. There was there was a nice undertone of grown up stuff mm. that that all the writers, but mainly I think headed by Peter Marietta. Love him. He was <clears throat> excuse me, he was putting in things like um, you know, a Pixar movie mm. where it's good for the kids, but then the adults get to have a little yes. laugh too. What I what yes. I feel like and we've talked about this before as well, but like what I think was special about Wizards is everyone showed up and wanted to elevate. Nobody ever showed up and was like, man, it's a kid's show. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I, I think we attracted, and you were no exception of this. Mm. You literally took what was on the page and went, how can I elevate this? How can I do more? You never just went, oh, okay, this is what it is. All right, I'm just going to phone it in. Thank you. you. No, you absolutely did. And, that, and it set from Peter down – there was a high bar set of mm -hmm. like, we're going to do more than what's expected of right. us. And we're going to reinvent, not reinvent, but we're going to kind of just bring something different, something new, something unexpected yeah. to what, when we could just kind of phone it in and do pixie stick acting, the right. high energy nonsense yeah. that doesn't have heart, doesn't have intention. And commitment. And commitment. Yeah. You know, commitment is a big thing that I teach. And mm -hmm. as an actor, <laughs> I have no problem with commitment. Not at all. You know? And yeah. so it was like, okay, I committed to this character. And you can kind of see my last episode. Which, which was? Hot dog. I was a hot dog yes. vendor. I remember that day not really wanting to play her anymore. Yeah. You know? You've done it nine times. And I had asked for a raise. Yeah. Which is it's Disney. Um, Wait, hold on. Sorry, Disney. Mm, um, Disney. Yeah. <laughs> but Go I ahead, had you do it. Say mm, I, Disney. Mm, Disney. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I had asked. I had asked for more money because I was yeah, getting you were nothing. Nothing. You got yeah. paid nothing. And it's not really about the pay, but if you're showing up and you're sort of, yeah. you know, doing your job well. In any other circumstance, you get a raise. Yeah. Yeah. You know, well, it's show business. It is not show art. It's you, a yeah. business. We're trying to make a living. I mean, we're we're all trying to yeah. get paid so that we can actually and buy I, food. Yeah. And, you, I mean? and you came back more than because I, I think some yeah. of the like Greg was one of the recurring characters that we had the most, and I think you came back just as much, which was great as, I, as a lot of our very common recurring characters. Yeah, and I I don't regret any of it, but I a lot of people ask me, no, where you, did you go? Yeah, yeah and there's. No, but you rightfully no asked for what was deserved. Yeah, yeah. And and uh, I guess that's the best way to get uh, off the show. Can I have more money? <laughs> Wait, what happened? Hello? <laughs> Hello? Yes. Are you there? Magically, yes. she disappeared. Yes. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But um, it's just something that, that happened. Disney, uh, I, I will credit them on negotiating the best negotiating tactics mm -hmm. because it used to be you would get a quote you would work and then you would work for that quote and then you would go in and audition for a show at that quote and negotiate yeah. mm -hmm. well disney just said you want this job that's it yeah and then i tried to negotiate uh -huh. with the thing yeah. and the thing and the one thing and i'm not going to say his name but my manager at the time i said do we get residuals that's all i asked no. about and he <laughs> said yes and I didn't realize it was a sliding scale yeah. um, because my weekly paycheck, 75% of that counted as a residual. I have a Disney. residual check in my purse, actually. You have a check? You brought a check? I from did. Wizards? I'm, from Wizards. But oh my listen, gosh. I'm not complaining. I'm I very that, happy I that, that I was prepared. on the show. Wanted, you know what I mean? I know, that, that, but like, I, no, but it, but it is a unique thing about Disney. That's what is it? One cent? It's what is a this? dollar. But no, I, I usually get like a dollar uh, fourteen. Yeah. No, there there Disney? are episodes of like network television that I get more money from that I did one episode than I do than I ever did. From, from the Wizard. entire yes. season, yes. series of yes. Wizards. And I think that that's, for me, it's a spiritual lesson, which everything is yeah. a growth opportunity. When I look back, I thought, okay, what was this purpose in my life, this yeah. show? Um, I, I'm sitting here with you. I got to meet beautiful human yeah. beings. The best part also was it taught me to trust my instincts. Mm -hmm. It taught me as an actor and as a human being to trust my instincts. Yeah. I had an instinct to go in there and try something. Yeah. And there's nothing more rewarding than when it works. And, yeah, and yeah. it paid you know? off so well. And there were well. certainly times that it didn't. And I also learned- But you have to experiment. That's a part of the process. Yeah. And and working with a great team, Peter being a rock star, you know, um, I always felt like I was held in a safe place that yeah. first season to make mistakes. Yeah. 
Um, and so when something wasn't working, it was wonderful to have these great directors. Yeah. And we had great guest stars too. Yeah. Like I remember Octavia Spencer and yes. I. Yes. And she was like, all right, what's this show about? What's going on? And I, I remember her showing up and and I remember her being kind of shy yeah. and quiet and me sort of explaining, oh yeah, well, it's really fun. And it was just a great opportunity to get to meet wonderful people. Yeah. And so that's what it's worth for me. Yeah, the residual aspect, not so much money, <laughs> no. but was that I got jobs as a dad in in, in movies and stuff. And yeah. uh, the the admiration that we got from everybody that, that is that the right where it, yeah. the people or, loved us yeah, you know you in mean? love and, and that's sweetness well, like, the connection sweetness. with other people yeah. Yeah. you know what i mean i i so, uh, maria's husband david actually way too many davids and wizards by the way way too many davids um but he actually told me early on and i've stayed kept this with me and i've actually turned down jobs or taken jobs because of this because it's such great advice um but he said you take a job for the people for the story or for the money mm. And for me, Wizards was about the people yeah. and or, or the story or the yeah, character. But also and you I, don't and I know, love... but you don't know the people before you start. Well, but it ended up being about that. I guess yeah. it could be. The you know what I mean? And, and so it's like so. But I loved the character so much, yeah. and 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 it ended up being the story, like a great yeah. story about imperfect people trying yeah. to figure it out together, and, and then the, the people yeah. ended up being really wonderful to work yeah. with. The first so. table read, it was clear that it was a special group. Yeah. You know, yeah. with those table reads are some of my favorite yeah. moments of a show. Because yeah. it's where the play starts. Yes. yes. You know? And I just love No pun intended. You know, every, back in those days, they'd drop your script off at your house. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. And, and I was terrified because I'm dyslexic. So I said to them, I don't give a shit what time it is. You knock on the door because yeah. sometimes the writers are rewriting the script or writing the script up until two in the morning. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And I said to the the kid who was dropping off the script, I was like, "You wake me up. You yeah, wake me up because I, I have to pre-read that script." T uh, yes, table reads were really fun, but terrifying for yeah. me. Yeah. There was one table read I don't remember. I, I, I and I, I I had read read and highlighted every single line I had. And at one point I turned the page and I was like, oh, fuck, I'm still talking, shit. Yeah. So I looked at it and I made one mistake. That was season two. I didn't tell anybody I was dyslexic up mm. until that point. And then someone was like, are you dyslexic? And I was like, maybe, I don't know. I don't know. Because I didn't want anyone to look at me and be like, you know, and 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 think that I couldn't handle it, you know. Yeah. And because of also that, I was able to memorize my lines better because I hear it and I know it. Yes. Yeah. You know. Yes. Now I hear it and I don't know who I am. Yeah. I mean, I can't even. <laughs> do you have trouble remembering lines now? Or no, is that... I visualize. Um, you know, I've been sort of retired and being a mom and a teacher. Um, so I teach memorization and it's really about visualization. What do you say? Give me a, give me the 411. Cause so, I have a little bit of a, like what I say, but what do you say? I associate an image to every line, you know, and when I do that, the repetition as well, you know, that burns it into my brain. That's why I can still remember a lot of those wizards lines. Well, they also were classic and they yeah. stuck in, like I'm taking a shower and I go, welcome to Flood, to Flood, to Flood. <laughs> I don't know why you talk about saying that. One. It sticks. I think it's just the name, the way you said it, like it just sticks in there. Oh, so funny. Reason. Well, what are your other questions? Uh, well, wait, I, I said for memorization. Oh, I yes, just yes. Say, I say, say the first line three times, then the, and then say the, the second line three times, then the first line, second line three times. And just just keep adding and building and yeah. making it not about what you're saying, but just like routine. Just think about turning the pedals on the bike. You know what I mean? So that you can then not think about it yeah. anymore and then yeah. go to the See, that's It's so that. interesting just hearing, because actors are so, there's a million different ways to bake a cake, right? Mm -hmm. um, so it's just so interesting because I always teach people, I'm like, look, I always do it flat. I, I memorize it flat because you want to be able to add the color later. That's Which my is hard right because it's, it's hard because like, you want it, your you're instincts. Like, I want to kill instincts, you. You know, you're like, yeah. I want to kill you. No, yeah. your instincts are like bursting through and yeah. they want to come out. Um, and so when I first read it through, I write down my instincts so I don't lose them. Um, but I memorize it flat and I always memorize it, uh, go through it one, uh, like a few times before I go to sleep when my brain's deciding what it wants to dump and keep for yeah. the, right. from the yeah. day. Yeah. So that way, so right before I bed, go to bed and then memorize it flat. One yeah. of the questions I had for you, yeah. kind of going back to technique and all that sort of thing, and you're talking about teaching. Um, so you went to CalArts to get, you know, your degree in acting, and then you went back to NYU to get yeah. your degree for teaching. Yes. What is something, two things. One, how do you take a proper degree in acting and translate that to a kid's show? Mm. And then 
What is something that you teach that you wish someone had taught you? Ah, good question. So start with the first one of like, how do you translate classically, classical training of acting mm. with a kid show? I started my own business actually, because mm -hmm. as a theater person, you know, I didn't work for three years mm -hmm. out of school. Yeah. I would go into the audition and be huge. My, you know, big face, big loud. But for kids stuff or for everything? For everything. <laughs> And that was something, I got, so right. starting, so yeah. I get it, like but I didn't know how That to, was something I had to learn too. Yeah, so I started a business on how to basically transition. Yeah, it's a thing. From theater into film or TV, yeah. right? And it's really about doing less mm -hmm. and, and laser focusing. So when you talk about memorization, I always teach objective. What do I want? Mm -hmm. When I show up, what do I want to achieve, right? And so if I marry my line to my objective, which yeah. is an action word, right? I want to forgive, which is an action. You don't yeah. just snap your fingers and forgive someone, right? That's a process. I can't forgive anybody. I'm very angry. <laughs> right now. I'm know not going to bring her up. The anger. IMDb. Um, but, but my, Holland. Right? I was Holland not going to trigger warning. <laughs> um, what I learned from transitioning from you know doing Shakespeare and yeah. Chekhov and all this like very interesting, difficult stuff, you know, is that I already had what I needed to do anything. Yeah. And I think acting is a spiritual process mm -hmm. as well of, you know, we are what's for sale. You know, we are going in there as a commodity. Mm -hmm. And that can really do a number on your brain. At least it did for me. Yeah. And so what I learned to teach my students is start with what's already there, you know, Start with, you know, there's a kid in all of us. I think that's why I love working with kids and I love kids shows. Yeah. That unfortunately, I think life has really gotten so scary out there. And I, as I'm raising a child, I, I want to protect her sure. <laughs> from all of it, but I can't. You know, deep down, we all are really good humans. Yeah. And we're silly and we're funny and we're weird and quirky and... And we need to be given permission by other humans to do that. Yeah. And so what I first do with my kids is just sort of build in a company credo of like, what are our rules for how we're going to be human together? Yeah. You know, what if we make a mistake, you know? And I love when you made that mistake and you went, blah, 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 right? Yeah. What I do in my class is we clap, especially mm -hmm. with my incoming freshmen because I teach high school. Like, yeah. oh, you made a mistake. My best moments in life were not planned. Yeah. You know, um, I may have gone in with the intention of being Glenn Close or, you know, whoever, whatever serious dramatic action yeah. uh, actor, excuse me. Like, but I ended up being this funky girl on a kid's show. You know, um, what a gift. Yeah. What a surprising turn of events. Yeah. <laughs> you I think know, we all have an individual thing to us. So yes. My mom always said to me, give your gift. So your gift is yeah. different from Jennifer's and, and mine. So we all have this unique thing to us, you know? And I think we learn from mistakes. I say to my kids, if you don't, if you get your, you know, algebra homework exactly right, you're not really learning. Like if you get yeah. a mistake on there, then I said, this is class. We want to make mistakes, you well, know? And perfection is boring as yeah. hell. And especially like even on a micro level, like we're talking about macro life levels, right? On a micro level as an actor, some of the most interesting work comes yeah. from when you make a mistake and you yeah. force yourself and into the moment. I was a reader for a lot of casting directors. I yeah. felt so grateful because yeah, I could so sit much. across from these amazing actors and watch them flub lines, use them, yeah. you know, and I learned that the most interesting organic stuff is going to be what's not on the page, yeah. Yeah. it's how you're looking at me, and I can't plan for that because I'm a total control freak, mm -hmm. I have OCD. And you also know? Making, but making, if you can recreate those moments where you are really out of your touch, the, something that hit me was, Third Rock from the Sun, and I auditioned for that. <laughs> I give him shit and for I dropping dropped, his IMDb. But yeah. I, I dropped my script, and I dropped a line, and I mm. said something, and I whatever, uh, and I think that's what got me the job, that I was able to recover from that, make it funny, yeah. you know? I mean, well, it's Anne Hathaway, Princess Diaries. She fell out of the chair. There's yeah. like countless examples. Yeah, and that's what acting is. It's recovery. It's yeah. really like, yeah. I just lost this job, right? Uh, how am I going to go back into that next audition? Yeah. Be of service with an open heart. Right. 
And I think that's what life is too. You know, I think it's like, how do I recover from this thing? How do I recover from that thing? Like yeah. as a cancer survivor, how do I recover from this? Yeah, yeah. that's everything. You I know, mean, that's, yes. and that's so what intense. actors are the bravest people in the world. Yeah. You know, and I, I think it's because we, we get hurt every day. Yeah. yeah, we get asked to dismiss ourselves from a project. Yeah, you know, um, I've been fired from shows because I just wasn't the right fit. Right? Sure. And congratulations! And I, I had a wonderful actress who said, "You're not really living unless you've been fired." Yeah, from my job. dad said, "Congratulations!" When I got yes. fired. yeah, you're in the club. And yeah. it was, Jen hasn't been fired yet. Uh, well, oh. we, we figured out I had been. Remember, oh. M Night M Night Shyamalan fired me. Fucking from ass doing <laughs> no he loves redheads too. There's a no, redhead. so no apparently. <laughs> No, I, well, because it was for a voiceover. He thought I was, uh, he wanted, it was for uh, The Village. Uh, and he mm. wanted uh, a little boy to do like the creepy kid and at the thought beginning. You were a boy. He thought I was a boy. When he found out I was a girl, I got fired. Bullshit. Well, you know, <laughs> either way, it's also saying like, oh, that's not personal. No. Like that has nothing to do with me. But honestly, there's so many parallels with life and acting that you kind of, because there's such a thin veil, mm -hmm. right? Because it is about, it's not personal, but yet it's about you because you're too tall, not pretty enough, whatever. But the thing is, what's interesting is like, those are two big lessons that I've learned from acting that have transitioned into life is one, how to recover. Mm. So like in the scene, how do you recover? In life, how do you recover? And then also, it's not about you. It's not personal. Yeah. Those two things have been huge. Yeah. It's there's both a, an actor and a person. Yeah, there's a great book, The, the Four Agreements, which yeah. one of them yeah. is don't take anything personally. Yeah. Always do your best. Be impeccable mm -hmm. with your word and never make assumptions. I can't fucking believe I remembered all four. That was really good. Yes. Oh. But it's so hard to put those yeah. into effect. Listen, yeah. we do a... Uh, uh, crystal ball segment oh. and I have my wand oh. that's my wand I just touched my wand don't worry uh, don't, I, I washed my hands okay here we go I'm God. picking out I'm picking out a, a how do we open this Jen here hold on help me I'm so excited we've got our wand it's, okay it's here, here you why don't pick you it pick out, it out and then Jen will read it oh this is so exciting <laughs> Okay. okay, did I get one? There we go, yeah. yes. Here you go, Jen. Thank I'm you. I'm holding yeah. this, I got the thing. She got it, okay. Hands. Okay. All right, so, do you have any advice on ways to take care of your mental health? Oh, I love oh, that. that's a good question. Of course good I question. got that one. Of course you did. Well, because you, you, you oh, threw it out of the I crystal ball. I love that. Um, you know, I'm thinking about 20-somethings. Yeah. Those are our demographic that might be listening to this show since they grew up with the show. Um, you know, I... I can only say I was miserable in my 20s. I was miserable. And, and now that I'm in my 40s, I'm so grateful that I understand what self-care is. Yeah. You know, it requires me to pause for long enough to remind myself that I'm a human being as opposed to a human doing. You know, I, I yeah. tend to prove my worth to myself, especially in my 20s was like, I was only worth my last job as an actor. Mm. I was only worth, yeah. you know, what, for my students, what school I got into, for college, whatever. And I associated my own self-worth with this external thing that I yeah. couldn't control. So mental health for me is, is an inside job, right? It starts with understanding like, oh, there's discomfort here. I don't, I don't like to feel feelings, but that's what they're, that's what they're for. Yeah. You know, they're meant to be felt. Um, I was super comfortable feeling them on camera. But as an adult, you know, I just recently, especially going through cancer, stopped and started to feel things. And yeah. the only way through them is through them. Yeah. So for mental health, for me, it's not taking those feelings, putting them up on a shelf. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And waiting for them to, you know, sort of crash down. Yeah. It's allowing whatever's there to be there. And that can be really hard. I had an acting teacher. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I remember walking in to rehearsal one day um, and I told her, you know, something's going on with me. And she said, give it to Donna. Give it to her. Mm. Meaning the character I was playing. And I, I had to learn to allow myself whatever was there as an actor and mm -hmm. as a human being. Because pushing it away ended up, you know, being down the line more of, you know, a hazard to me than, you know what, I'm having a rough day and I can start my day over at any time. Yeah, yeah the you know? reset button. The reset. The reset button, a little meditation. Yes. And, and if I may put my two cents in there, I think the serenity prayers mm -hmm. help me a lot. 
Yeah. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and, and the, the wisdom, wisdom to, to know, know the, the difference. difference. Now, if there's something I can't change and I'm focused on it and it's yeah. driving me crazy, you know, focusing on the things that I do have control over right. or is something that helps me. And also being a parent, mm -hmm. you want to be a nice example for your child. Yeah, and I, you know? I didn't have a parent that would apologize to me for their behavior, you know. And so I love my parents very much. One of the things I learned is to say to her, like, hey, mom should not have lost her temper. Like, mom yeah. is having a bad day and mom took it out on you. Like, I'm sorry. I'm going to work on that. Mom should have not punched <laughs> that barista in the throat. <laughs> well, that's the other thing. Like... Kindness. I think that's huge for mental health. You know, yeah. I, I think the world is scary and everybody seems to be in a bad mood these days. So being the change that you want to see in the world, mm -hmm. you know, I, I want the world to change. And I can do that by holding the door, yeah, you know, smiling. Things. Oh, my God, I get angry, though. I try to do nice stuff, like going into a Starbucks or something. I'll open the door for someone. If they walk in and don't say thank you, I go, you're fucking welcome. <laughs> I know. <Jesus> Christ. <laughs> I can I can understand that impulse because I have it too. Yeah. And then that's where compassion comes in for me. Like, oh, what has that person just lived through? Yes. And what it's are not they going about through? You. There's a lot of stuff no. where people can put their shit on you. Yes. And then and then you take it. And it, you shouldn't yeah. take it because yeah. don't take anything personally. And it's know? it's really about allowing yourself that self-acceptance and self-love. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't, that's not a, again, something you can flip a switch and do. It's a daily practice of, oh, that was hard. Yeah, let's take a second, you know, before we send that text back. Yeah. Or just allowing myself a little self-compassion Yeah, um, helps me, you know, generally. And it also helps that I, I don't go into a business like acting every day anymore. Yeah. You know, I miss it. Uh, I fell in love with it because of the art of it. But I don't really actively do it anymore. I appreciate yeah. you... I'm, I'm currently, I know, I know, I never, yeah. I've, this is only the second, I'm not going to do it, I'm not going to do it, I'm going to shove it back down, which isn't good. Nope. Um, Let it no, out, I know, Jen. I know, it's not good. I'm, I'm currently trying to, having nursed through the pandemic through the mm -hmm. past, like, three years, that was a lot. Yeah. And um, I'm currently trying to figure out how to, we, we never stopped, no. like, we saw a lot of shit, and we never stopped to process, and a lot of my friends are like, oh, well, they must have a lot of mental health resources at the hospital. They don't. Yeah. They don't prioritize that. It's a broken system. Um, so I'm personally trying to figure out how to, where to put all of that. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, acting was always that catharsis because yeah. I relate to so much when you said that I would always shove it down and then it would come out in characters. And so I haven't had the privilege of having the acting catharsis as my controlled emotional outlet in in a while um so now which i think is a blessing mm -hmm. because i think god or uh, thank you i think god or whatever you want to you know call it um has put that in my life because it's time for me to to learn how to to not rely on that outlet mm -hmm. but to be able to to let that come through and feel it. Because like you said, the only way through is to actually feel it and to go yeah. through it and experience and you, it and you, let it breathe. You have extraordinary circumstances. I do you have extraordinary circumstances. Are, yeah. But at the same time, as like like I said, I and, I, and I'm only just now realizing this. Mm -hmm. It's a newer thing for me that I've... I've gotten very good at shoving things down and going, I'm fine, I'm good, I'm okay, mm -hmm. I'm fine. Because again, the people pleasing, you want to make sure everyone else is okay right. first. Right, right. Um, and realizing my only safe place where it was okay to feel was acting. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm in that place. Yeah. I have not figured it out yet, obviously. Um, that's okay. No, it is okay. Yeah. It I, is I okay. Think, I think you're in the process but of it's, figuring it out. No, yeah, I am. No. But it, but it's yeah. just, it's so, I so relate to you saying that of like, of yeah. like I just have to get, I have to feel it and, and move through it rather yeah. than push it down or push it away. Yeah. Because um, I, I am very guilty of pushing it away or finding a um, other Place sure, to put it. I, I think we all are. Or it's a disconnect because, you know? like, characters can be, even though they're personal, they can be a disconnect, and like, yeah. that's a safe space well, to. I just stop. I appreciate your honesty, yeah. you know, and your candor. I, you know, I'm a teacher, so I just went through um, the four years of my students that were my COVID kids. Mm -hmm. They just graduated, and we went and had dinner last week, and watching them go through that, yeah, from a teaching standpoint. 
and my fellow teachers, you know, anyone who's in a position of service, mm -hmm. I'm saying yours is much more important. It's, it's relative. It's all but relative. You think the, thing these, for those kids, that right. was really traumatic for them well, with what they have a concept for. You think shortage of people who want to wait tables now. Like, yeah. people are, are, are not interested, you know, in putting themselves in there because someone's going to walk right by and not say thank you because you held the door, right? Mm -hmm. And so what I think for me I'm learning is I get to let that begin with me. I get to be uh, – and I didn't have this when I was an actor. Like mm -hmm. I get to have dignity. Yeah. You know, acting. Yeah. What a concept. <laughs> right? As an actor, like integrity. And I always was surprised when people say, oh, I turned that job down or whatever, right? Yeah. It's little choices that I make that are in my best interest. Yeah. You know, it's it's saying no and knowing that that's a complete sentence. Mm -hmm. It's not apologizing because I'm yeah. human and yeah. I have feelings. And it's also kind of leaning into the discomfort. There's so many thought leaders that have asked us to be vulnerable, like Brene Brown. And that yeah. vulnerability was something I was always so proud of as an actor, yeah. you know. And so to bring that into the world in this kind of atmosphere, that takes a lot of courage, too. So Thank you, because what you're representing for young women is it's okay to have feelings. I don't have to have this all figured out. I don't have to post and look like, you know, my life is beautiful all the time. And I think we all need to be more real with each other, for sure. you know, in terms of mental health. What helps me the most is when people say, yeah, me too. Yeah. 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 They, they, I am identifying with the other person and having someone say, I've been there. Yeah. yeah. Feeling less alone in any experience yeah. is crucial because it's this feeling that I think we all have at one point or another and then over and over and over again at various stages of like, wow, I'm the only person who's ever felt this. I'm the only person who's ever gone through this, which life has been going on cyclically for so long for human beings that no one is the first person to ever go through anything. Yeah, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's just having someone say, hey, I understand is Paramount. Yeah, and it's good just for <clears throat> anybody who's feeling down or yeah. anything that's going on. Talk to somebody, talk to a friend. You know, expressing yourself yeah. to a parent and to a friend is, yeah. I think, really important. Well, it's amazing how much it takes the air, the yeah. power away from yeah. that thing. Yeah, yeah. isolation. Like, is yeah, because really I, I struggle with depression really, really hard. And the moment I talk to someone, that mountain that I think that I I have to face becomes a hill. Yeah, yeah. 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 And the actors are notorious for you know Being having assholes. Wait, what? <laughs> But having, you know, having these pre-existing conditions, yeah. addiction, you know, all of these things. There's personality traits that draw us to that. Absolutely. Sure. And so I think one of the things that will help all of us, and this is just for anyone listening at home, is just like, I don't know, reach out and hug yourself and give yourself a little pat on the back yeah. for waking up and brushing your teeth today. Yeah. I like I, something I saw, I heard recently, which I was like, I love this, was like somebody's therapist told them that they were like, you know what? It's okay to have rat days. And what they mean by that is like days where you don't really do anything. Mm -hmm. You just stay at home and you just are told. That's my life. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, but like truly like you don't like the days where we all beat ourselves up because we're not more productive and we yeah. didn't get off the couch and we only like binge watched a show. Like give you, allow yourself to yeah. have those yeah. days. 100%. If it turns into a month, maybe let's talk about it. Yeah. But like no. well, allow yourself to have those days and call them like self-care days. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Self-care looks different for different people. Also, I love that you're like, we went from hotel floor to floor to floor <laughs> yeah, to like, to like so <laughs> mental health. So, Let's so talk. It was the crystal we, ball. I, yeah, I, I, I know, does it every time. I'm going to ask you a question and yes, then we're yes. going to let you get back to your life. But your character on Wizards, what would, I'm um, improv, what would you say uh, uh, that character would say as a teacher, as an acting teacher? What would, you know what I mean? Like, I do have seeing, one more question after oh, this. Oh, okay. okay. But I mean, what would you say? It's like, uh, and go. Do less. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Nice. I love it. Well, I, okay, I lied. I have two more questions. Okay. One um, is, because I never want you to leave. That's fine. Um, but, okay, the first one is, is like we were saying earlier, is a lot of people come up to us and they say, like, you were my childhood, right? Mm -hmm. And or, or they say things like, you know, Wizards was a show that parents could watch with their kids. So you have a 10-year-old. What's the show that you guys watch? Oh, together? yeah. Oh, my God. Like, what's a show that, like, you guys can enjoy? <sighs> she loves Wednesday. 
Uh, yeah, um, that's a good one. You know, she plays the cello. Yeah. She's an aerial artist. Okay. You know, she loves like. What does she not do? Wow. She's yeah, just, geez. She's really cool. And so like, yeah, she she loves something. I think that's a testament to our show too. It had a little edge to yeah. it, a little darkness. You think everything has to be saccharine for kids? Yeah. No, she loves Wednesday. Nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then what are, so your character had all of these odd jobs. What was like. Your your worst odd job in real that life. you had in real yeah. life. Oh, I had so had. many. Um, so I was writing a piece. I have two answers to that. I was writing okay. a piece. Uh, actually, it was a musical about s- amateur strippers. Yes. <laughs> so I'm I'm seeing, like, 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 there's some amateur parallels. strippers. That's. <laughs> I mean, that's it was just a comedy in itself, right? And I took a, a cocktailing shift at Cheetahs. If you remember Cheetah's. Which was the strip club. It is yeah. still there. Um, from 10 to 2 on Saturday nights. That was strange. But the weirdest job I had was at the Standard Hotel on Sunset. Yeah. When you check in, there's a human tank. Oh, my God. That was you? I you wait, a hu- yes. a human, Hold on. For the people who don't know, explain what the human tank it's, is. It's a, it's, a, it's a little room where yeah. it's like a display, like where a mannequin would be. But there was a human person. And that was fucking. You? A human person doing what? Just sitting there just watching sitting there. TV or reading a yeah, book. So or I, it just was like performance art. Yeah, but oh, like okay. I, you know, they ask you to wear something kind of cute, right? So I would wear like a vintage slip and like red lips and yeah. I would always fucking fall asleep. So I'd wake well, up and like- your shifts? Like eight hour shifts, oh like red lipstick, like up my face. Drunk guys like, hey, you know. I think that's a really cool job. Yeah, I like it that. is. I yeah, like bizarre. That you got to do that. Yeah, you got to pay, get paid to sleep. <laughs> Ten bucks an hour. Hey. Yeah, nice. and I mean, I had every job. Like, I worked at a Renaissance fair when I was a kid. Like, huzzah! I mean, I was honesty, the village liar, <laughs> right? <laughs> Uh, wear a, I wear a sign on my neck. Like I, I mean, I danced around the maple for an extra five bucks a day. Yeah. Like ever since I can remember, it was all about finding work. Right. Yeah. I worked for photographers. I worked all over LA. Yeah, everything you can fill in in between the auditions to mm-hmm. try to get a job. I painted houses for ten dollars an hour. Nice. And I, I also worked at a yogurt store for two years of my life. Yeah. The yeah. Gert Barn. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. Identified with. There's that so many actors out there that wouldn't be there without the people that were like, hey, I'll throw you this job. Yeah, You need a couple bucks to make rent. Yeah, I will yeah. give a shout out to my buddy who I went to high school with, Jeff Campbell. He gave me a job. He allowed me to go on auditions and also work. Yeah, you know? I, I worked at a pharmaceutical company and they were amazing to me. You know, and they would always gather in the conference room and watch me on TV when I was airing. Aww. That's pretty cool. They were that's, amazing. That's- priceless to yeah, have like okay. a job like yeah. that. So those people are, are really the people we, we get here yeah. because of, I think. I my, my parents yeah. made me get a, well, they didn't make me, but they were like, during the writer's strike, I went back to Texas to get my driver's license. And they were like, well, why don't you get like a real job? While you're here. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I love your parents, <laughs> yeah. but acting is a real job. Well, my dad, my dad <laughs> loves to say, he still loves to say that. He's so grateful that now I have a real job. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and or went what to the real job school. is, is trying to get that fucking job. Exactly. Well, and, but he doesn't, exactly. my dad's very old school, so he never understood that. So he Same. was, after after Every, Wizards, he was like, so are you going to get a real job now? And I was like, great, thanks, Dad. Yeah. Everybody says that. Everybody says real job, not yeah, real yeah. job. But it was funny. Well, he used to say Jeff, that about school, too. He was like, oh, are you going to go to real school now versus <laughs> yeah. homeschooling? And yeah. I'm just like, okay, Dad. And they're, they're in life's uh, uh, perception of what, of what yeah. we're doing. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know? We're not going to take any more of your time. Oh, thank you for being here, thank Amanda. Thank you. We, we heart you. I heart we you really so hard. We really appreciate you being here. This was awesome. Congratulations on being a mother, a teacher, and a cancer survivor. And an That's overall amazing. amazing human being, thank which you've you. always been. All right, let's all do it in sync. You ready? I don't know if you're going to rem- know what I'm saying. <laughs> we didn't plan this. You ready? And action. Welcome, Welcome to, to the Hotel Fleur du Blanc. Love you guys. Yes, love we you. love you Thank too. Thank you for Amanda. being here. Thank you. Yeah.